the holy grail of the Bidis group Bidis parvicula the Ethiopian mountain adder woohoo they're finally here if you look at this uh, ga gal closely you can see a little bit of mix of all the different uh, Bidis group in there uh, the two subocular stripes, very reminiscent of East African Gaboon. Uh, but the overall head of something more like a puff adder and certainly uh, the behavior of a puff adder. This is a young female juvenile. Uh, I'll be showing you some larger uh, specimens as things go here, but we're just... Uh, uh, taking it slow and marveling in certainly one of the most amazing of the 15 or 16 or so recognized species within the Bidis complex. Uh, this is certainly one of the more difficult ones to get and amazingly enough um, these don't have hardly a scale out of place and were well maintained in captivity for quite some time before they were sent here. They were stabilized and and allowed to clean up a little bit and uh, not the usual roadkill that one gets from Africa. So these are just marvelous, marvelous specimens. Um, a little bit more on that later. Yeah, you did scare me. I know you're a big bad bitus. This is a young male uh, from the same group of individuals that you might be seeing some of. I would say he's probably uh, two years old or less. Uh, I'm not really certain because I haven't seen any newborns, but uh, Bittus babies are generally pretty good size, not the dwarf variety like Cornuta and Cordalis. Uh, these guys get up to uh, Bittus nasicornis size, rhino vipers, just like Mr. Sniffles. He's a good uh, three-footer, multi-pounder. No one really knows very much about the venom of this species because it's encountered so rarely. Uh, so I'll be uh, getting some tests done and titrations against the different African polyvalents uh, to see which one works best if someone screws up with one of these. Okay there Buster, you can't go under there. This is uh, almost certainly a gravid female. Uh, you can see the CD uh, as a size reference. So they do get to be Rhino Viper size. And perhaps, uh, well, I would say that was a good rhino viper uh, uh, type size here. And you can see where the bulge uh, begins and where it all ends. Uh, she's working on a shed out and it's rather drab looking, but, you know, when they're younger, of course, and... Uh, less uh, sizable and freshly shed. They look like those little youngsters I saw you. Um, I couldn't even begin to guess how what the age is of this particular uh, gal. But I just realized I was probably a little bit closer than I want to be. Um, this, you know, I know how puff adders and behave and and that's about as close in disposition as one can get with these guys. Uh, so, knowing that, I certainly 
am right on the edge of range but uh, they don't seem to be as snappy as puff adders they just seem to uh, to wait for you to blunder in too close and then if necessary uh, take you out but uh, just just a massive uh, girl just a massive girl here's your uh, typical hook loop next to the head and I guarantee you she weighs as much as uh, some of the large puff adders and certainly as much as some of the average adult uh, rhino vipers. Here's another nice male using rectilinear motion to uh, uh, to head of course where you don't want him to go. He doesn't seem to be too impressed by my presence but you can see the males have a very very long tail compared to the short stubby ones that the females have. And you notice that they're not quite as massive simply because males usually grab something on the way to the next female so they don't just uh, sit and hide and uh, produce babies and grab something that comes along the game trail. These guys are cruising along the game trails visiting all the females that they can uh, come up with uh, scent trails for. You gonna yawn for me, huh? You're raising your head up. Oh, nice tongue flick. Look at that. Ethiopian Mountain Viper Cam. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Truly one of the rarest seen and photographed uh, vipers that uh, you can come across. And if you're a Bittis fan, uh, these are the these are the ones. Very sought after, very difficult to come by. Very few collecting permits are issued. They're only uh, found in a very small area, therefore uh, they're very particular on how many are taken. And I really don't think that they figure into uh, uh, bite statistics very much because you really have to sort of mm, go looking for them. They're not like puff adders that'll come into your hut over there it, or you're easy to stumble on one out in the brush. Again, to give you an idea of size, there's your typical uh, snake hook. Just another beautiful animal. Woohoo, they rule. Hmm. Look what we happen to be here for. I can't see. Do -de do 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 do. But I bet you could bite. Uh, this uh, young man is in the process of ridding himself. His old skin, and I don't have my normal tools, so it's it's a little tough. I want to make sure that uh, Mr. Eye Caps go with. Oh, I can see you. Can you see me? Huh? Let's see if we can help this little fellow out a little bit more. You know, I bet he feels like a little kid whose mom is trying to yank the t-shirt off. Okay, well that's one eye. I think every kid has experienced that from mom. Well, there's the other eye cam. This feels a little stuck on.
Well, at least you can see now. Huh? It doesn't seem to be too testy. Uh, I know from experience, if you try to help a puff adder, uh, they'll tell you exactly where to go. And he's his respiration rate and stuff is up there, but he doesn't really seem to be too aggravated with me. Or at least he hasn't told me in uh, terms that I very much understand. Like taking a snap at me or just really huffing and puffing. But at least he can see. see Everybody can wants see. to see your pretty eyes and face. Look at that. Huh? You're a beauty too. You're a pretty guy. Look at that. Bitis parviocula, folks. One of the true rarities of the viperid world. They uh, hang out in high altitudes in Ethiopia and coffee plantations. Require low, uh, low temperatures, lots of moisture. You get them too warm or too dry and uh, they don't do so well. So let's uh, get this guy a little bit more water for this uh, this head of his and uh, get him back in the bin so he can uh, work the rest of this uh, shed off. Look at this beauty. Every time I say that, uh, you know, really remember Steve Irwin's uh, legacy he gave us and stuff uh, on how so much he's done for the uh, the world of venomous snakes and reptiles in general and of course all sorts of other animals in his native Australia. Um, he's sort of the pioneer of, uh, of uh, all the uh, incredible uh, herpetologists that we've seen on real TV over the past several years. Uh, I remember the only game in town used to be like Wild Kingdom and stuff and snake program was something that occurred like Haley's Comet when I was a kid. Um, so we really owe a lot to, to Steve Irwin and you know I think of him often and, and you know what he's uh, done for the hobby in general and certainly understanding of, of venomous snakes and portraying them as as just other creatures on the planet trying to make a living and uh, you know unfortunately uh, sometimes the interactions between man and venomous snake and of course other animals too uh, because hippopotamus kill more people in Africa than venomous snakes and crocodiles all put together but no one ever uh, talks about that but uh, Steve has really done a lot, and uh, uh, since this is truly a rarity and, and such, I, I dedicate this particular uh, film se segment on the Bittus Pervicula uh, to Steve Irwin and, of course, uh, uh, Terry, Bindi, and John and everyone there at Australia Zoo. This is another uh, gravid female now that I got sentimental and everything. Um, this is probably another gravid female from the uh, uh, group that uh, my partner and friend brought in. Uh, we, uh, of course, are going to uh, not let any gravid females uh, uh, out of our control uh, in hopes to have the, some of the first captive-born babies sometime in the future. Many of these animals you will probably see at uh, some of the premier zoos uh, across the country. Uh, I'm not going to name names, but uh, a lot of these specimens are going out to, to those folks. So, uh, with that said, uh, uh, I will uh, close down this particular segment and uh, 